Hello there, Richard Westwood from St Anne's Church in Chasetown with a midweek message for Wednesday the 31st of March. I guess many of us, as we begin to slowly re-emerge from uh, lockdown number three and parts of our, the more normal parts of our life get unfurled gently as uh, the restrictions are relaxed, many of us will have a list as long as our arm of things we're looking forward to being able to do again. For lots of people it's a haircut, I'm fortunate to uh, not have so much to look after in that respect, but lots of us will have other things that we're desperate to want to do, whether it's seeing and hugging uh, loved ones who we haven't seen for a while, or something as simple as going out for a, a cup of tea or a beer somewhere, all sorts of things. Lots of us are really looking forward to coming out of what feels like a year of restrictions and difficulties, and for many other people, uh, loss, grief and all sorts of life upheaval. But as well as the things that we're looking forward to getting back when life returns to something like normal, I think there might be other things that we've learnt in the course of the last year that we would prefer not to forget. Things that we've, we've gathered or gained in the course of the last year, not because the pandemic's been good, clearly it hasn't been, but somehow God is able to use even bad and bring good out of it. So I'm wondering what are the lessons that I've learned, that we've learned as a church that, that we want to make sure we don't forget. We don't want to unlearn what we've learned. We're, I'm speaking in the middle of Holy Week, uh, that preparation time for the great celebration of Easter, of Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And a reading I read today comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 10. And Mark's telling the story of Jesus approaching Jerusalem. He says, this is Mark chapter 10, verse 32. They were on their way up to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way. And the disciples were astonished, while those who followed were afraid. Again, he took the 12 aside and told them what was going to happen to him. We're going up to Jerusalem, he said and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will turn him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. And Jesus really couldn't be more clear, could he? He says to the disciples and those who are with him, look, we're going to Jerusalem and this is what's going to happen to me. And perhaps the disciples knew that in some degree because it says they're afraid they kind of know there's stuff going to happen in Jerusalem when they get there and then remarkably the next bit that comes after that in Mark's record is this verse 35 is headed the request of James and John the sons of Zebedee James and John came to him and said teacher we want you to do for us whatever we ask what do you want me to do for you he asked they replied let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory what were they thinking? Jesus has just explained what's going to happen to him at Jerusalem and somehow these two disciples and perhaps there were others as well are asking who's going to get the the kind of left and right hand seats when Jesus is in glory. What were they thinking? I, I, I don't understand but maybe they didn't either and Jesus has to once more tell them that it's not about glory. And he continues um, and finishes this section that Mark records for us and says, um, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For, and here's the key bit, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So if the disciples, including James and John, needed to be reminded of what Jesus' ministry was all about, then probably we do. And I think in the course of the, the last year, there have been some reminders, some lessons for us 
that God has been able to offer to us that we've been able to, to learn from. And I'm delighted that in the course of this learning experience, St Anne's has been a, in, so heavily involved in the life of the community. And if Jesus is saying here, through Mark's Gospel, that his calling is to serve, not to be served, that's equally the case for the church in every age. And so I'm really pleased that uh, at St Anne's we've been heavily involved in serving our community. And uh, if you have a look here, you can see the food bank box that's been an important part of people's donations to the work of Burt Would Be A Friend and the food bank. And also a familiar site, the Burt Would Be A Friend tent, where a food point's been happening um, every Monday for, uh, well, best part of a year now. And if we flick the other way, you can just see there some of the spaces where there's going to be a community garden, uh, which some of the church members and other members of the community are going to be working on in the coming months. So I think as a church, St Anne's has been relearning a lesson that, that we probably needed to, to be reminded of, that we're here to serve. And it's been a privilege in the course of this pandemic to find ways that we could serve the community, to be the hands and feet of Jesus the kindness and care which he wants to give to the people of Chastain, especially those who are in greatest need. And I really don't want us to unlearn those lessons. I don't want us to slip back into a normal which forgets these really important aspects of our mission and ministry as Christians. I wonder what would be for you as an individual and for me what are the lessons that we would want to make sure we don't forget from the outcomes of this year of pandemic? What might God have been teaching us that we need to pay attention to? Um, that question, of course, rolls over to us as a church fellowship and, and whichever community groups you might be involved with. What lessons have we learned that we need to make sure we pay attention to? and respond to. That reading from Mark's Gospel is so significant because it becomes the hallmark not just of, of Jesus' ministry where he says this is why I've come not to be served but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. And if it's the hallmark of Jesus' ministry it also has to be the hallmark of the church's ministry and mission too. Someone once said to me that the church is at its best when it gives itself away. And that I kind of stuttered as I thought about that because that feels incredibly risky. But it is the pattern of Jesus' ministry, isn't it? We're not here to preserve ourselves, but to serve others. And for that, we need God's mercy and grace. And we can only serve others when we recognise that we have been served by Jesus. And that's at the heart of the celebration of Easter, that Christ dies for us on the cross on Good Friday, even goes to the grave. And Easter Saturday is the remembrance that Christ is there with us, even in times of loss emptiness and death and then there's the wonderful truth of Easter Sunday that Christ is raised that death isn't the end and knowing this great good news we are able to receive it allow it to, to be allow ourselves to be changed by God with it and then we're equipped to go and serve in whatever way lots of us will have different ways of serving it may be by listening and praying, by answering the phone, by caring. But our mode, whatever it might be, whether it's something more hands-on or something at home, whoever we're serving, our, our mode, if you like, our, our way of operating needs to be flicked, not from receiving service, but to giving service. Let's think about how we can cherish that in the weeks and months as our community life begins in, in earnest once more. 
May we not forget that we're here to serve. A prayer. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that your love for the world was so great that you came, lived, died and rose again for us. Thank you for serving us in such a costly way. May we too learn how to serve. Give us grace to allow your serving love to help us and feed us so that in turn we can pass on your love in actions and in words to all in our community and beyond. Help us, Lord, as we celebrate Easter to receive afresh from you the great good news of your love for us. We ask, Lord Jesus, this in your name. Amen. Thanks for listening. Stay safe. And when you get there, a very, very happy Easter.